The statement was made against the background of how Russia recently demonstrated its readiness to arm the Houthis with anti-ship missiles and transfer the Pantsir S-1 medium-range air defense system to Hezbollah through Syria. Against the background of warming relations between the regime and Russia, the Taliban announced their intention to build air defenses in Afghanistan with the help of Russian equipment. And if in recent months, as it turned out, Moscow is ready to arm the Houthis in Yemen and even Hezbollah in Lebanon with modern missiles, it may not be so ready for the current ruling regime in Kabul, writes Forbes. In early 2023, less than two years after reconquering Afghanistan amid a chaotic US withdrawal, the Taliban allocated the largest share of Afghanistan's defense budget, declaring their intention to build air defenses. Anti-aircraft missiles are a need of the country. There is no doubt that Afghanistan is trying and doing everything possible to get them, said Taliban commander Kari Fasihuddin Fitrata and the army chief of staff. On August the 29th, General Syed Abdul Basir Saberi, chief of logistics at the Taliban-controlled Afghan Ministry of Defense, was much more blunt. I think we need equipment for air defense and airspace control. We have ground equipment. I think we will buy such products from you at the international level when the international legal conditions for this appear, Saberi said. It is noted that a few years ago it was impossible to imagine that the Taliban could make such a request. But Saberi's statement was made during a period of warming relations, an example of which was Moscow's invitation to the St. Petersburg Forum in May. Saberi's comments suggest that the group hopes that warming relations could lead to the purchase of weapons. The statement also came after Russia recently demonstrated its readiness to arm the Houthis with anti-ship missiles and transfer the Pantsir S-1 medium-range air defense system to Hezbollah through Syria. The transfer of armor to the Taliban or short and medium-range systems such as the Buck and Thor would undoubtedly alarm the United States. After withdrawing troops in August 2021, the U.S. killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in an over-the-horizon drone strike in central Kabul where the Taliban were hosting him. The advanced air defense system in Afghanistan may make it difficult to carry out similar operations using drones. In March, the Taliban said that American drones were patrolling and violating the country's airspace. There is also a serious risk that any air defenses Russia supplies to the group could endanger civilian aviation. Afghanistan's airspace has become one of the main routes between Europe and Asia, and many airlines that previously avoided it for years have increased the number of flights over the country amid heightened tensions in the Middle East between Israel and Iran. The remnants of Typhoon Yagi have brought heavy rain to southern China's Guangxi region that borders Vietnam and the southwestern province of Yunnan, leaving cities and towns deluged and roads cut off, state broadcaster CCTV said. In the city of Nanning, in Guangxi, heavy rain caused by the storm and water from upstream areas have swollen the Yu River. A pier and shops in a low-lying waterfront area have been flooded and submerged, CCTV footage showed. 93 ferry crossings in the city were suspended, and more than 20 construction sites temporarily closed, as the river's level continued to rise, CCTV reported. Elsewhere in Guangxi, heavy rain over the past two days has led to landslides along several sections of road in Fangchangang City, cutting off traffic. Debris from five landslides had been cleared as of Tuesday afternoon, CCTV said. Heavy rain also hit various locations in Yunnan province in the country's southwest, damaging roads and forcing residents from flooded homes. In Mohan town, nine residents were stranded on a rooftop and surrounded by floodwater before rescuers moved them to safety. Some residents in Hiku County were also trapped after heavy rain flooded their apartment buildings. In Wenshan Prefecture, several sections of road were damaged. No casualties have been reported in Guangxi or Yunnan. Earlier authorities said the typhoon had left four people dead and nearly 100 injured in Hainan province, where it first made landfall in China.
。那由于由于受摩羯残留云系带来的降雨以及上游来水的影响呢，可以说豫江水明天上午前后呢，水位将达到七十四点三米，可以说这个水位上涨的是非常的快，而且。